Hi everybody. Today is Friday, 25th of June. Let's continue uh, with uh, so problems, fusion webs, inner communication electronics. For this series, going to be about uh, chapter six. Um, best our uh, plan webs. Problem 6.34 C, sorry. A circularly polarized wave of strength E1 travels in uh, the positive Z direction with uh, the deflected circularly polarized wave of strength E prime returning. So you have an incident wave and deflected wave. And uh, your electric field is given as the these expressions so you have uh, both components of our x and y and uh, also uh, you take a look at the, these two terms one you have our uh, exponential negative for uh, jkz so that's why I put this one as the the plane wave is going to uh, the positive uh, z direction, and uh, for e exponential j k z, that means uh, this is the actually reflected uh, wave going to a uh, negative z direction. If you have a uh, this direction pointing from uh, the left to the right. Um, Phi, the average pointing vector. So this is your pointing vector. The average become uh, one and a half, the real part of uh, E curve edge uh, conjugate. And discuss types of termination at z equal to zero to give the two forms of deflected waves. We start from uh, P average equal to this expression and uh, from Maxwell equation so that's mean uh, you need to look for a uh, conjugate vector by applying Maxwell equation you can find your edge or the magnetic field for a rectangular coordinate you occur E simply equal to uh, this expression and since Sorry, I'm missing this one. Uh, that's supposed to be a uh, derivative. Okay. Uh, also, or for this one. Since your x has only your x and y component, so uh, easy drop out, easy drop out. And uh, also uh, your x component and y component depends on uh, z only. So uh, you don't have this term. You end up with uh, also this term drop out. So you have a, uh, you leave only two terms. S uh, negative uh, differentiate ey over the z and uh, plus derivative of the x over the z and uh, since e is given so you just do a differentiate and that's the by applying Maxwell equation you end up with the uh, curve e equal to a negative j omega mu h so uh, your h you don't have this one and uh, the average the pointing vector equal to uh, 1 over 2 uh, real part of E cross H uh, conjugate and uh, I just do straightforward become uh, EX uh, unit vector X plus EY <coughs> sorry unit vector uh, Y cross the, since you have a uh, H in the component of uh, X and Y 
So you have uh, each x uh, conjugate unit vector x plus the h y conjugate unit vector y. And uh, you end up with uh, e x h y conjugate. You have e y h y h x conjugate. E x h y conjugate, e y h x conjugate. So you can work this uh, out. You end up with uh, e x h y conjugate become this term, and for e y h uh, x uh, conjugate, you also uh, uh, have this term. But when you work this out, you have only your two term left. So it become the real part of our E x h y conjugate and uh, the last term uh, e y h x uh, conjugate because the e y h x conjugate and e x h y conjugate uh, cancel out. So uh, your average pointing vector uh, become uh, 1 over 2 k omega mu e1 square minus e1 prime square unit vector x or uh, simply uh, this term actually equal to 1 over eta you can prove. Since the k uh, over omega mu equal to uh, k equal to 2 pi uh, over lambda, that's the wave vector, right? And multiply by 1 over omega mu. And, <coughs> sorry, you have uh, 2 pi f over lambda f. Uh, that's the 2 pi f equal to omega, and uh, lambda f equal to v, or the wave velocity, which is the v equal to uh, 1 over square root mu over omega epsilon. So, uh, your k over omega mu actually become uh, square root mu epsilon over mu which is the equal to 1 over eta that's the intrinsic impedance of the media or in the unit of uh, eta in the unit of uh, ohms now let's consider it for the reflected wave uh, given er equal to this expression your go through the same steps um, your p average equal to 1 over 2 the three part of uh, uh, e cross h conjugate and you end up with uh, p a v equal to 1 over 2 eta e1 prime square that should not be so difficult for you uh, uh, to work this out so you have a p a v incident or Parting vector and you have deflected the uh, average parting vector go to a uh, negative z direction and for the incident one this one go to the positive uh, z direction now let's consider more for reflected wave to have the same rotation I mean uh, in the term of polarization to be uh, circular polarized x unit vector x plus j unit vector y and you know that for circular polarization the magnitude of a x uh, actually e x and e y should be the same and that's the become open circuit condition at z equal to zero or that's become a short circuit at z equal to pi over 2k um, for example, you see that uh, exponential e to the jkz equal to uh, e to the jk pi over 2k. Um, that's become j because you know that e to the j theta equal to uh, cosine theta uh, plus j uh, side theta, right? So your cosine uh, pi over 2 drop out. That's a uh, zero 
and cos i uh, pi over 2 become 1 so you have only j left for the fact that we have to have the opposite rotation ey must be reversed or uh, you have this one the psi uh, switch from a positive to be negative so that means you have z equal to pi over 2k and that's the for reflected wave consideration problem 6.5a is about our standing wave find the instantaneous pointing vector for plane z for the standing wave of section 6.5 you have the boundary here, and this one is the perfect conductor, this is the air. Note the planes for which it is zero for all value of t and comment on the significance of these planes show that the average pointing vector is zero as stated in section 6.5. Okay, you take a look at the picture here. You have incident wave going to the positive z direction and reflected wave going uh, along uh, the negative uh, z direction and this is uh, z equal to zero okay uh, the upper plot represents the ex and the lower plots represent hy So, uh, from uh, section uh, 6.5, instantaneous forms of the fields ex the zt uh, equal to, uh, to uh, e plus psi kz psi omega t, and for uh, hy, that's the equal to, uh, to e plus over eta, and you know that uh, h and eta related by h. Um, Eta equal to E, right? Um, so the pointing vector P equal to E cross H. So uh, you simply cross E and H, and that's give you Z. And uh, two and two make four. E plus and E plus make E plus square divided by eta. So you have a psi k Z cos I or kz uh, psi omega t and cos i omega t straightforward and now uh, by using uh, the property psi uh, a plus a equal to 2 psi a cos i a or psi a cos i a simply equal to psi a plus a or psi 2 a over 2 so uh, this become, uh, I mean, a psi k z cos i k z become uh, um, psi uh, two k z, and four cos uh, uh, sorry, and uh, psi omega t cos i omega t does become a psi two omega t, and uh, you were you know divided by four but since four and four cancel out you shouldn't have a four eh? do I did something wrong here um yep shouldn't have a two because psi a equals psi a equal to psi two a over two right eh? okay so four should supposed to cancel out so you don't have four here now uh, let's consider at p z equal to zero. So uh, this one is zero. Size zero equal to zero. Or uh, simply k two k z equal to n pi, right? Because the when two k z equal to n pi, psi uh, n pi uh, give you zero for all times. So that means from zero, to one, two, and uh, etc. At these planes, either ex or hy is zero. Okay, because we have the pointing vector equal to e cross h all the time. 
Now, uh, let's continue looking for uh, the p average. I can show you by this, you know, equation. P average is one over t. T is the period of the wave, and you integrate from z to t, and uh, p dt. And p dt uh, simply is what you don't have for it. Um, e squared plus over a to t psi to k is z because uh, you integrate with uh, respect to t so you just integrate psi to omega t and this become our function our function is mean fx equal to negative f and negative x so your p average becomes zero you don't have to do integration because you know that the one period of integration of uh, our functions does give you zero Problem 6.6b Consider a lossy ferrite with both mu and epsilon complex mu prime minus j uh, mu double prime and e instead of uh, become epsilon sorry is become epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime this one is the become interesting problem respectively because you know that Usually you put this one as mu as the real number, right? But now it's your permeability turn out to be uh, the complex number, which is the mu prime minus j uh, mu double prime, same as the for epsilon or permittivity. Show that the transmission line analogy for a plane wave and the circuit analogy for a plane wave and a circuit. In this material has both theory resistance and channel conductance determine expression for these elements. So you look for uh, the analogy for plane wave and the circuit. For the transmission line, this is your equivalent circuit of your transmission line. For a lossy circuit, you have only L and C. So you can see is the uh, capacitor per unit per unit to length, right? Z equal to R square root L over C. And for lossy circuit, you have R, L, C, and G, when uh, G is the uh, conductance per unit length. And your Z, that's the characteristic impedance of our transmission line become a square root R plus J omega L over G plus J omega C. Now you take a look at the wave equation for lossy ferrite from equation 3 pi 10, 3. Uh, usually this become a omega mu epsilon, right? Ex equal to zero. But since the, your mu become mu prime minus j mu double prime, you just uh, uh, represent mu as the mu prime minus j uh, mu uh, double prime, same as the epsilon. Now, uh, let's go to the uh, transmission line equation. This is from equation 5.11.3 and 5.11.4. The grammar is the, actually is the propagation constant equals uh, square root of uh, z, y. And uh, for the plane wave, I'm sorry, for the transmission line, <coughs> sorry, you know that your gamma square equal to r plus j omega l g plus j omega c so that's in term of uh, r l g and c then uh, you have uh, from equation 5.113 you end up with uh, um, this equation but since you want to compare the uh, wave equation and the uh, transmission line equation so uh, you take a look at the wave equation try to arrange equation to be similar to the wave equation above you already have omega square but this one become positive so you uh, simply take out j and you take out j j and j give you uh, negative one right so one multiplied by 
negative and negative if you were positive you end up with r over j omega plus l g over g, g over j omega plus c okay the next step is that uh, um, you just rearrange the term that's become l and uh, this become a uh, R over J omega mu become a negative J R over K. R over omega and this also becomes C minus J or G over omega is equal to zero so uh, you have a similar equation then uh, you compare the verification uh, with uh, the transmission line equation that's mean uh, your mu simply equal to L, right? This is your mu, uh, sorry, mu prime, mu prime. Analogy to L. What about our mu double prime? The mu double prime analogy to R over W, oh sorry, omega. And for your E prime, that's analogy to what? C, right? And also our E double prime analogy to our G over omega. So at the end, you have zero equal to, uh, that's the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, equal to square root of z over y, eta equal to, uh, you know, uh, before this, that's equal to uh, square root mu over epsilon, but uh, it's turned out to be mu prime minus j mu uh, double prime divided by e prime minus j uh, e double prime, epsilon double prime and your uh, sigma become a square root of yj and can be written in this expression and your, this is your k okay so uh, this is the problem number 6 by 6b 6 by 6c reflection and transmission coefficient are given in equation 6 by 6 1 11 and 12 in terms of electric field give uh, corresponding ex expressions in terms of magnetic field and in terms of uh, power ratio so uh, from uh, equation uh, 6 by 6 11 this is your deflection coefficient and uh, from equation 12 this is the transmission uh, sorry transmission coefficients and this is your boundary so you have a uh, ex positive and reflected become uh, ex negative and transmit into uh, the media too that's the ex2 same as uh, magnetic field now uh, they they are looking for power so your power is the reflection power ratio that's become uh, the Reflect, reflected power divided by incident power represented by uh, P plus for uh, reflected power represented by uh, P uh, negative um, so what is your reflected power that's become uh, one and a half E X the what negative right hold on a second okay let's continue um well for the power average does it become one over two e and h right so uh, sorry that's missing a uh, h y negative same as the the incident power that's going to be uh, that's going to be one and a half of uh, e x positive multiplied by h y positive and you can do the same thing for the transmission power ratio that's going to be uh, uh, p uh, transmit that's mean uh, p2 which is the one and a half of e x2 multiplied by h y2 and your p positive going to be one and a half of e x plus multiplied by uh, 
EX plus, that's the incident uh, power. Now, from one, um, you uh, rearrange the term. <coughs> Sorry, that's actually the ratio of E uh, negative over E X positive. Actually, this one become uh, the deflection coefficient of electric field. Same as the H Y negative uh, over H Y positive. That's become uh, the deflection uh, coefficient of uh, magnetic field. Same as uh, equation number two. You have a tau E, that's the transmission coefficient of electric field multiplied by transmission coefficient of uh, magnetic field. You already have a uh, rho E, you already have a uh, tau E, but you don't have a uh, rho H and tau H. So uh, let's find uh, rho H and tau H. Since SY uh, plus plus the SY minus, or this one is deflected magnetic field, right? And this one is the incident uh, magnetic field, and uh, SY two is the transmission transmitted uh, magnetic field, and you also have EX plus plus the EX minus equal to EX two. And you have relation uh, EX plus over SY plus equal to error. But for reflected uh, fields, uh, this becomes a negative error in the term of EX minus over SY minus. And for transmitted field, E2 over SY2 equal to uh, Z2, ZL. That's given right at the beginning. Um, then uh, from this equation turn out to be error h y h plus minus error h y minus equal to z l h y two. Now you pick up equation from uh, three and four. You multiply uh, both sides of uh, equation number three by error. Let's give you uh, equation number five. And uh, from uh, equation number four and equation number five, uh, four plus five, uh, that's going to be your what? Your eta h y minus cancel out with the positive eta h y minus, so you end up with that two eta h y plus equal to z l plus eta. HY2 and you finally you have uh, the transmission uh, coefficient for magnetic field become a uh, 2 error over ZL plus error. Next looking for uh, what rho H. It's just about uh, the straight math, simple math. From equation number 3 you multiply uh, because you want to get rid of uh, HY2, right? So you multiply by uh, equation number 3 by ZL, and then uh, let's give you equation number 6. 6 plus 4 gives you uh, uh, these expressions. So uh, your rho H, the deflected uh, coefficient for uh, the magnetic field, uh, become uh, eta minus ZL over eta plus ZL. So uh, from uh, the power ratio, uh, that's what you're looking for, the deflection power and the transmission power. Uh, for the reflection power become a uh, rho E, rho H, and uh, for the transmission uh, power become a uh, tau E, tau H. Then uh, you can uh, work this out. So you end up with uh, the deflection power become a negative eta minus ZL square over ZL plus eta square. And for transmission uh, power that's become uh, for eta ZL over ZL plus the eta square.
problem 6.7c check the expression for power transmitted into a good conductor given at the end of a sample 6.7b by assuming that magnetic field at the surface is the same as the reflection from the perfect conductor and computing the conductor losses due to this current associated with the, this uh, magnetic fields You have perfect conductor. This is the air, and you are emaxed. You go back uh, to the textbook. That's become uh, to e plus over eta exponential j over t, and your et go to zero. H max is equal to uh, two h i n. Uh, that's the, from the section six point seven. Um. For power loss, P equal to I square R. And since the your P or T also are your I actually become a four E plus square over eta. I'm I'm not going to go back to this equation. Um, but you have to go back to the textbook okay this is the simple form so uh, the ratio of pt over p total simply become uh, for rs over air that's in the section 6.7 b now uh, the power loss in the conducting surface you want to compare to uh, the conducting surface from equation 3.18 5 that's your power equal to one and a half of Js the square Rs where Js equal to uh, 2 H plus and H you can write H in the term of E as the E over eta so your Js uh, square you just plug it in you have uh, the power loss become 1 over 4 for E1 plus square over eta square Rs so you can find the ratio of uh, your WL and PT. This is correct. Uh, 4 plus 4 cancel out. Let's see uh, what I'm missing here. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm sorry, just do a uh, straightforward. You want to find ratio of the power loss divided by P total. This is your power loss. And this is your P total. Simply it's supposed to be four and four tensor route. And that's become uh, eta one plus square. But I don't know why I have this one here. So this one becomes E1 plus square R is over eta square divided by uh, supposed to be this term PT. Right? Sorry for my mistake. And uh, this become four. Seem like I'm missing something. Okay, PT. So you multiply eta by. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, that's supposed to be this is supposed to be P total. Eta one. Hold on a second. Um, I mean, uh, this is supposed to be uh, equal for Rs over eta because they want you to check from uh, the conducting server first, you know, as well. Sorry, it's my mistake. I put this one wrong. 
is supposed to be two, right? One and a half. So this one become two. Okay, that's correct. So they are equal for rho s over eta. Okay, so just uh, I put this one as one over four instead of a one over two. The last problem, problem uh, six by five b. Evaluate instantaneous values of stored energy in electric field and in magnetic field between the conductors and plane Z in the standing wave of section 6.5. Note places for which the two forms of energy have the same maximum value occurring at different times and verify the statements concerning stored energy made in section 6.5. Okay, this is the store energy in the magnetic field and this is the store energy in the magnetic field from the textbook. And from equation, you have UE equal to these expressions. From equation number 19, you have a UH equal to expression, to these expressions. And your EX square equal to four plus square psi square kz psi square omega t. So your ue equal to epsilon over 2 and e square. So, so that means you have the x square here. And also hy, you start from this equation and your, this is your uh. Now the total energy is UE and UH for unit cross-section and space between uh, 0 and Z and 0 uh, become a UET uh, integration from Z to 0 1 and a half epsilon E squared EZ This is the equation given So you just plug in your E and you just plug in your H you end up with uh, these expressions for UE and UH. Now uh, let's consider energy density equal amplitude where psi square uh, kz equal to cosine square uh, kz or simply uh, your tan equal to 1, right? So that's why uh, you know that uh, psi theta equal to cosine theta uh, that means your theta equal to pi over 4. So this is supposed to be uh, the odd number of uh, pi over 4. Or actually it's the number of uh, pi over 4 multiplied by uh, uh, pi over 4 where n uh, equal to 0, 1, and 2, and so on. Our energy in your E between uh, cosine omega t equal to zero because uh, you have uh, uh, omega t equal to pi over two and three pi over two. Let's give you a cosine omega t equal to zero. Same as h, it's going to be equal to zero when uh, omega t equal to zero and pi and two pi etc. Uh, note that the exchange between uh, your E and your h occur twice each cycle. Okay, so you have pi, as uh, so you have pi over 2 and pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and so on. Uh, so this problem of our energy store in uh, electric field and uh, magnetic field. Okay, that's all for the whole problems in this series. And uh, we will continue uh, so problem doing so problem in the next series okay bye